my, my background's uh, like computer science and mathematics, and I've kind of been doing um, artificial intelligence in some way since I was actually pretty young. Um, I started building like video game bots and stuff like that, and it kind of led me into like machine learning. Um, and sometime last year, I was I was running like an AI services company, and I got approached by Stephen Phillips, who is actually one of our co-founders, um, because he, he was like obsessed with the music problem, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll take a crack at it. And we actually began with building like search. So um, previously, he'd been working on like recommendation systems, which used like like metadata to like make suggestions whereas he, he was interested in seeing whether or not you could use the like raw audio to make those same suggestions and we actually like built a pretty cool prototype in the first couple of weeks but then we kind of realized that it was like one of the least interesting things we could do with the technology that we used to build it and that's kind of where we got kind of hooked on the idea of generation rather than search hmm. um, so we got into tech stars and that's kind of when you chimed in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I joined around then. So I'd worked with Adam in the past on just a bunch of random AI or big data projects at either like local hackathons or startup weekends and that sort of stuff. And um, my background was in like strategy and pitching and pretty much all the stuff that wasn't actually doing the tech. So I've um, been interning at Blue Sky, one of the big VC firms in town for about a year or so and done some kind of finance and consulting work while I was doing my law and finance degrees. And uh, yeah, Adam called me and was like, we need someone to come over and do BD and general do you business come to LA? stuff. Yeah, it was like a really, really vague <laughs> request. It was just like, we're doing AI for music. Um, I don't even think I told you that. Hey, yeah, hey was, I'm in LA, do you want to come? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was super, super vague. It was like, you want to come help out with stuff, like pitching. I was like, pitching for what? He was like, just stuff. I was like, all right. So kind of went over and since then that's a pretty accurate description of what I've been doing, just <laughs> pitching for stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're creating the world's best musical AI. Yeah. That's it. That's that's the nutshell version. That's um yeah, so I think uh, within that there's a lot of different avenues you can go down, but we think AI is going to change the way people create music. And the companies that exist today that are making music software and music hardware and are helping artists, they don't have the in-house capability and they won't for a long time to start looking into this technology. And we think there's going to be external providers who create these AIs and then work with these companies to get them to people. And we want to be the company that builds the AI that powers this next generation of music software and music hardware. I think on the assisting and replacing side, we sit very firmly on assisting, not in the sense that we don't think AI can replace, it already can, and there's other companies out there that are doing an awesome job of creating royalty-free music and stuff like that, but I think the way we see it assisting early on might just be, for example, helping a piano player compose a melody or helping someone with a chord progression or helping someone who has to do a score by getting an AI to give them a rough version of what some of the different instruments could be doing during that score. So um, I think, yeah, the big part of it will just be having an AI that can act as a songwriting companion that can suggest things or for people who don't have as much musical experience maybe say, oh, you should do this instead because this is going to sound better. So anything along the avenue of helping someone who's creating to do it either better or faster or in a unique and novel way that they wouldn't have considered, I think, falls within the ambit of what we're trying to explore with AI. Yeah, kind of the, pa the parallel I like to draw is um, maybe like the old school drum machines. Like when that kind of first became a thing, it meant like a whole new like set of people could make music that they couldn't. Mm. Um, so I see like AI as an assistive tech to kind of lower the barrier of entry on like what it means to actually be able to make like, like really nice sounding music. Yeah, there's like a long, long storied history of music tech breakthroughs that everyone gets really scared of at the start. Like I think when the gramophone came out, all the orchestral unions went on strike because they thought they'd be out of work. And as Adam said, with the drum machines, people got scared originally and said, oh, no one's a musician anymore. Anyone can just use one of these. But instead, what you see is people using the tech in new ways that no one had thought of before, which is kind of the birth of like drum and bass music or like UK house music. And no one gets replaced, there just ends up being a lot more people involved creating new sounds and we think AI is going to be really similar where people who currently don't have the tech expertise or the time to create music 
or the music training can suddenly use an AI which makes it a lot easier and they'll be able to create new and different music to what exists today. Surprisingly, some of the challenges are probably not what you expect. It's more about defining the use case for AI in terms of um, like what, is, what does it actually mean to play with an AI um, rather than the artificial, like rather than the tech behind it. Like I think we've done a pretty good job modeling that, um, but how, like what is the actual interaction? Like when does it come in, for example? Like are you just playing and it's listening and responding or is it like you play something and it modifies it and makes suggestions? It, it's, it's less like, I guess the challenges for us, like, right now at least, isn't necessarily the like deep tech. It's how do we best like create this user experience that previously didn't exist. Yeah, Techstars was really good. So it's probably the biggest accelerator in the world. I think yeah. um, they've got yeah shops running all over the place. And what they've started doing recently is these vertical focused ones. So like AI or Alexa or finance. And this year was the first time they've run a Techstars music, which was really cool. So they hosted it in LA and they had a thousand or something applications from all these music companies from around the world. And we were yeah lucky enough to be one of the 11 that got accepted into the program. So we shipped the team over in February or got, yeah. a, got a house in Beverly Hills and the whole team. Yeah. Just got this big in Airbnb, <laughs> chucked everyone in it. And then, yeah, just worked out of the office with the rest of the textiles companies for three months over there. And it was really, really good. I think, um, it was very BD intensive yep. in the sense that a lot of it was focused on meeting with music industry execs or with music tech people or with musicians and producers and whatever it might be and working out what they were looking for in AI and how they could eventually use the tech. So that was really cool for us, getting yep. that early exposure to the end users or the potential partners or the potential buyers or whatever you want to call it, just um, having the opportunity to meet those people early on and see what they were excited about and see that there was something really valuable in the space. Yeah. I think just like the sheer surface area of the type of people that you meet, like mm. um, we had like meetings with senior executives of like really awesome companies that mm. um, we, we would have never had the chance to like get into the room with. And it's yeah. really rare just in general in the music industry to have all those people in the same room and not fighting over something. Mm. So yeah, it's, definitely. it's really, really yeah. unique experience what would the musical Turing test actually be? Mm. Um, so like the initial... I don't think we still know. We still don't yeah, know. Exactly. I say, I, yeah, exactly. I, I don't think we have nailed exactly what that is yet. Yeah. Um, some people could say that like it might be you play some music and it's indistinguishable from whether or not it was composed by a human. But uh, like I think my hunch is you play with somebody and you can tell whether or not they're intelligent. Like, um, mm. can, you, can you tell whether or not you're playing with a human or an AI? I think that's maybe our first like hypothesis yeah. about whether or not like it's it's passing the like Turing test. I think that's the one we're more excited about because technically, if you just said like Turing test is an AI song, like what does AI song mean? Like, is it an AI composes it, but a human sings over it, or is it work similar to what Sony did, where an AI composes parts of it, but then a producer, a comes, producer in. comes in and does like re does pretty much the whole thing and puts it all together. And I think, or does an AI have to do the lyrics? Like there's a lot of different levels, which I think will make that kind of a confusing and not very consistent term in the media over the next few years when like everyone's saying this is the first like real AI song. Um, I think the better test for us is like, rather than an AI song, an actual AI musician, like the same way you can sit down and jam with someone and just pick up a guitar or a piano, or whatever it is you play and start playing with someone and see how good they are. Like, can you do that with an AI? And what'll be exciting for us is when you can do that, not only to a really high standard in terms of the music, but also in terms of the interaction. So you don't have to be fiddling with like buttons and knobs and all these different levers to work out how you can get it to sound good, but you can just kind of sit down and talk and play the same way you would with the human music. Yeah, it, it should feel spooky. Like it knows what you want to do. Um, we've been talking about this a bit lately. I've been doing a lot of looking into the copyright law for music, given my slightly legal student background. Um, I think, yeah, there'll definitely be AIs that generate material that deserves copyright protection, whether it's owned by the person who was using it or the person who wrote the AI or somehow the AI itself is kind of still up in the air at the moment with different countries interpreting the law differently depending on what they've got in their own legislation. But I think you'll definitely start to see at the very least producers and musicians using AI tools in their own work. That'll be the first big step. So. Well, there'll be a lot of kind of headline grabbing with things like, oh, an AI has made this. 
I think the more exciting shift is going to be not like one album that no one expected to be made by an AI, but the fact that half of the albums in the Spotify Top 100 chart, or half of the singles in it, I should say, had AI involved in some aspect, whether it's simply an AI that helped with mastering or an AI that helped with some chord progression early on or an AI that kind of synthesized from scratch some of the sounds that are used in different loops or whatever it might be. So I think that's the more exciting shift, seeing how AI can power the tools that people are already using rather than looking at it from this kind of isolationist perspective, yeah. which is like an AI has to do everything. Because I think that's a really cool pursuit, but to an extent it's almost an academic pursuit. Like, okay, great, does anyone want that? Like, I think music is a very cultural thing. People like songs not just because of what they sound like, but because of what they know about the artist and because of what that signifies and because of the movements associated with different songs. So I think if you can hit a button and churn out a number one hit, then at the end of the day, like, what is a number one hit? Like someone still has to listen to it. And if you can just get a thousand songs made whenever you want, then like everyone's just gonna go listen to a new one. So I think what's gonna be more interesting is waiting to see the uptake of AI powered tools by musicians. That's gonna be the big shift we see over the next kind of five to 10 years. I like to think of um, like Instagram, for example, where it made like everybody a photographer, right? Everybody, everybody's way better at photography than they used to because of Instagram. Mm. And I think that'll be the same for like AI, AI powered like music creation tools. Yeah, kind of lowering the barriers to entry. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really exciting area. So Google have a team called Magenta who have sort of done some awesome work in the space and they created something called Nsynth, which we, um, we did a little bit of work on similar tech um, around the time they were doing it. But essentially what it does is it allows you to synthesize sounds from other sounds using neural nets to take different instruments, but then just different sound files and combine them together to create new ones. So like synthesize the sound of a blender with the sound of a violin and then give me like a G major. That's really cool because at that point you're moving beyond an AI taking existing sounds and putting them together and opening up the door to an AI actually creating its own sounds. So like what would this sound like and it's an instrument no one's ever heard before in a song and I think that is something that's interesting as being novel but also is something people are clearly excited about already like if you listen to songs that have come out over the past couple of years even like that huge hit from um like Diplo and Skrillex and Justin Bieber the what do you mean one it's got that weird sound that sounds like a dolphin that no one really gets like there's this huge focus on playing around with specific loops and creating funky sounds people haven't heard before in music at the moment and I think AI getting to a point where it can create its own sounds potentially without you having to describe that sound or without you having to know that you need it would be really really exciting because you're kind of stepping above then an AI just taking your violin and your guitar and your bass and putting something together and actually going here's an entirely new sound that's composed of these 46 different random things we heard like three of them are birds one of them's like someone walking and that's all being mashed together and yeah. generated into a new sound I think that will have some really cool possibilities for creative tools. I'd say near term, it's going to be getting our piano playing AI, which we've kind of nicknamed Alice at the moment, getting that to a level where it can start helping people in the songwriting process. At the moment, it's kind of really fun to play with and musicians can have a good time messing around with it. But I think we're getting pretty close to where it can start to be a valuable songwriting tool for people.